Hi, my name's Allison, and I'm an instructor here at the Langley Centennial Museum. You might see me if you come to visit the museum on a school field trip. Sometimes I get to visit you in your classroom, and I bring things from the museum to share with you and your friends. Today, I'm going to share a part of our Collecting the Past school program with you at home. I'd like to acknowledge that we are fortunate to be living, learning, and playing on the traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish people, including the Kwantlen and Katsi First Nations. There's a special name for all the things that we keep here at a museum. Do you know what we call them? You're right, we call them artifacts. An artifact is anything that's been made or used by people. And by looking at an artifact, we can learn more about the people who made them, about how they lived and their culture. It's a museum's responsibility to take care of all the artifacts in its collection and to share the stories of the people who made those artifacts and used them. Today we're going to look at a few of the First Nations artifacts here in the museum and see what they can tell us about how local First Nations people lived traditionally. I wonder what you already know about where their food came from, what their homes looked like, or how they traveled. Everything the First Nations people needed came from the world around them. From the land and mountains came different types of stones to make tools. The rivers and oceans gave them water to drink and lots of good food to eat. The trees and the plants provided wood to build with, food and medicine, and so much more. First Nations people have the knowledge, the skills, the ingenuity to turn all those natural resources into food, shelter, clothing, transportation. Let's look at the model of the longhouse that we have here at the museum. A longhouse was the traditional home of people living on the west coast was their permanent home and you could see that by the great big cedar boards it was built of. There's some uh, bulrush mats on the walls and what else can we spy? There's a paddle if we were going out in the canoe. There's some uh, inner cedar bark bundled up at the back. It had lots of different uses. How many baskets can you count? There's all sorts of different kinds of baskets, beautifully decorated, and they had many different uses. Some were for storing things, or carrying things, or collecting things. Look at those smaller baskets hanging up on the back wall. They've been made with holes in them, so that when you're collecting the shellfish, any water will drain out of the basket. There is a hand maul also sitting there on the bench. And closer to us, we can see the cedar bark skirt. There's a beautiful mountain goat wool blanket that was very special to Coast Salish people. There's a couple of stone knives. And right down there in the corner is the cooking fire and some tongs for lifting out hot stones. We saw a number of artifacts when we looked into the longhouse and now we're going to have a chance to look at them a lot more closely. I've got five different artifacts here on the table. Remember artifacts are things that are used or made by people and they tell us about the people who made them. These are First Nations artifacts. Here's the first artifact we're going to look at. Imagine holding it in your hand. How does it feel? Is it heavy or light? Is it smooth or rough? Does it feel cold? Do you think it has any sharp edges? What natural materials can you see that it might be made from? How do you think it was made? Were tools needed to make it? And how was it used? 
what would you do with it? What person or people in the family might have used this? Does it look like anything that we see today? Does it remind you of anything? If it does, what's the same or different about this artifact from the ones we have today? Let's look at the next one. It's a bit bigger. And how does this one feel? Does it feel smooth? Does it look like it might be rough, bumpy? Are the edges sharp? Notice this one has a number on it, like the last one. That's the museum's uh, artifact catalog number. It helps the museum keep track of all the artifacts and the information we know about the artifact. How do you think this one was made? Were tools used for th making this one? And does it remind you of anything that we see today? Do you know what material this one is made from? Here's a bigger one. How about this one? Might it be heavy? I'm using two hands. You can see how big it is compared to my hands. Does it feel smooth or rough? Does it feel cold when you touch it? How do you think people might have used this? And who might have been using it? Does it remind you of anything that you find in your house today? How about this one? What is this made from? Who recognizes this material? That's something special. How do we use this one? What kind of a tool is this? Put that end there too. And finally, our last one. Okay, I'll give you an idea of how big this one is. A whole ruler length. And it's made of a different material again from what we've seen so far. How does this edge feel? Look at all the grooves cut in there. What are they for? And what would you do with this? Does it look like anything familiar? Is it the same or different from something that you find in your house today? Let's think about that and see what ideas we have about these five different artifacts and how they would have been used a long time ago by First Nations people, how they made them and what they did with them. I'm sure you had all kinds of great ideas about what those artifacts were, how they were used, what they were made from. I'm going to share a little bit of what I know about each of them. Let's take our first artifact. It's made out of three different materials. There's stone here, some sharpened bone, and some plant material, maybe cedar or nettle twine, to hold the two parts together. It's fish hook for catching good-sized fish. Imagine the fish coming along and biting down on that sharp point. The fish would be hooked. Notice this little bump here. Again, our rope or our twine would go around there, just like when you use a fishing hook today and you have it on a line and you can lower the hook into the water to catch that unsuspecting fish. What about this one? Who knew that this was made out of obsidian? Obsidian? is formed when the lava, hot molten lava coming out of a volcano cools very quickly. We get obsidian, also called volcanic glass. Just like glass, its edges are very sharp. So this would make a good knife 
that sharp edge. This next one is called a hand maul. Hold it in our hand and use it like a hammer for pounding things for woodworking. You could use it with the next artifact. Who recognized that this is part of a deer's antler? See where it would have attached to the skull? It's been cut to make this nice sharp point. Put the wedge into our cedar log Pound it into the cedar to split off nice big boards. Or you might use it like a chisel to carve out your piece of wood. And what about our last one? Was this a tricky one? I always find this one is the challenge. It's made out of wood, all these grooves, and it's what's called a cedar bark beater. So we have our cedar bark here. We're going to pound on it. Pound and pound and maybe make a lot of noise. And we've taken our inner cedar bark and that pounding, that beating has broken it down. Now look at the soft individual fibers we've got that can be used for weaving, for making things like blankets clothing. Isn't that ingenious? How about if we look in a couple of the other cases here in the First Nations Gallery and see if we recognize any of the artifacts we've just been talking about. How about this one here? That's right, it's a hand maul. And there's a wedge. There's another wedge here. And that's a different kind of a maul that's set up to pound on that wedge. Over here, we have a different kind of woodworking tool. These are all called adz. An adz blade is for uh, chiseling wood and shaping it. Way over here is another one of those hand mauls. And down below are some smaller chisels. In this next case that has uh, all of the artifacts to do with fishing, propped up in the back corner is a sturgeon club. Coming forward, we see an anchor stone. You all know about using an anchor to hold your boat when you don't want it to drift. And if we move over to the right hand side, there's a sinker stone for holding a net in place and uh, some fish hooks. I hope you enjoyed visiting the First Nations Gallery at the Langley Centennial Museum with me and that maybe you learned a thing or two. Can you imagine people using all those artifacts that we looked at and learned about today? Maybe you could draw a picture or write a story to illustrate your ideas. And we've been talking about artifacts specifically belonging to First Nations people, but our homes are full of artifacts too. How about if you find a few that tell the story of you? Could you make your own museum exhibit all about you? You could interview your parents your grandparents or other family members and ask them if they can share a special artifact or two that tells the story about your family and your culture. Thanks for joining me.